Hello grade teens, in today's video we're going to be looking at the atom. So this is chemistry, we'll take a look at the structure of the atom, important terms that you need to know like atomic number, mass number, number of protons, neutrons, electrons, all the things related to the atom. Remember to subscribe for more videos like this one and look at the links in the description box below for topics related to the current topic of this video. Let's go! Right, grade 10, so understanding the atom is very, very important in chemistry. It's one of the most important things that you're going to understand. It forms the basis of a lot of other sections. You need to understand the atom and the structure of the atom and electrons and orbitals and all those things in order to understand how to name chemical compounds, in order to understand electron configuration, orbital diagrams, alpha bar diagrams, and in order to understand chemical bonding. So let's take a look at the atom and the structure of the atom. Over here behind me, you see what is a very basic and a simplistic diagram of the atom. You can see that I have positive protons and neg neutral neutrons in what we call the nucleus. Now the nucleus is the center, the central portion over here of the atom. It's always at the center or the inside of the atom and Surrounding it are the orbitals where we find the electrons. We'll get to the electrons in a second. But protons are positive, P and P, positive protons. They're found in the nucleus. Neutrons are neutral. Now, what neutral means is that it has no charge. It's not positive, it's not negative. Neutrons are important because they contribute to the mass of the atom. Neutrons are what basically determines if you uh, have a heavier atom or a lighter atom but because they are neutral they don't affect the charge so that those are the two particles inside the nucleus in the center then we can have a look at the outside on the outside of our atom in orbitals we have what we call electrons electrons are negative they're negative particles and they surround the nucleus in different orbitals now as i've mentioned this is a very simplistic version of what an atom looks like. You'll be learning about orbital diagrams and alpha bar diagrams a little bit later um, when we do the periodic table just after the section. So check out my channel for videos on that. But it's very important to know that electrons are always on the outside. They're involved in chemical bonding. Now I'll speak about where to find the number of electrons and protons and number of neutrons when looking at the periodic table in a second. But for now, I need you to understand the following. The number of electrons can vary, okay? However, the number of protons is always constant. And I like to think of it like this. The protons are in the center over here. They're not going anywhere. They can't move. An atom cannot gain protons or lose protons. It doesn't happen. However, because the electrons are on the outside in the orbitals, an atom can gain or lose electrons and this happens during bonding okay an atom can gain or lose electrons you also learned about this in electrostatics in physics if there's friction or rubbing of objects electrons can move from one object to another so electrons can move there on the outside think of it they're on the outer level the outer layers so they can rub off they can be lost or they can be gained but the number of protons is always constant Behind me, you can see the periodic table. And if you're not familiar with this yet, or if you haven't learned about this yet, it is coming up. It does come up in a lot of my other videos. There's a whole section in grade 10 called the periodic table, where you learn about why it's structured in this way, how it's structured, how that, how that affects the properties, how that affects different things like the atomic radius and all the trends. So check out my channel for videos on that. But for now, I want us to have a look at this key over here, which will always be given to you on your periodic table. This one behind me comes from the grade 12 exam guidelines. So even up to matric, they give you this key over here. And this key says some important things. Like it says atomic number, which is the number on the top for copper, it's 29. And it says approximate relative atomic mass. We're going to call that the atomic mass number. That's the number at the bottom for copper, it's 63.5. Those numbers are very important and they're going to help me determine the number of protons, number of electrons and number of neutrons within an atom. So I've taken a snapshot of that key, which you'll find in the periodic table. And I want you to always notice that even if they don't give you this exact periodic table, they will always give you two numbers associated here. Well, actually three numbers, but 
the one on the top and the bottom, that's the one that I care about. I'm not talking about the electronegativity, the sideways number. That is a different video. There will always be two numbers, a bigger number, this one over here, and a smaller number associated with the element. These numbers are related to the atom. The smaller number in this periodic table, if you take a look at this periodic table over here, in this periodic table, it always ends up being the number on the top. But it might not be, they can switch it around, but it's always the smaller number. That is what we call the atomic number. So it says it over there, the smaller number is the atomic number. And in a neutral atom, the atomic number represents the number of protons and the number of electrons. Remember, this is for a neutral atom. Keep in mind that the number of electrons can change. Okay, we'll get it to it in a second, but if we form an ion, then the number of electrons change, but the number of protons will always stay the same. So this small number, even if it's an ion, that will always tell me the number of protons, and in a neutral atom, it'll also be the number of electrons. So in copper, we have 29 protons, 29 electrons. Then this number over here is called the atomic mass number, or approximate relative atomic mass. If I take that number, which in this case it's 63,5, and I subtract the atomic number, which in this case it's 29, I get the number of neutrons within that atom. There we go. So the number of neutrons is the big number minus the small number or the atomic mass number minus the atomic number. So there we go. I've written big minus small. Remember the big number is the atomic mass number and minus small. The small number is the atomic number. That gets you the number of neutrons for that atom. Now let's get a little bit into more detail about what I mean by in a, in a situation like this. The number of electrons can vary. What does that mean? Number of electrons can vary, but the number of protons is always constant. This is the case if I speak about an atom versus an ion. Now, I don't know if you've learned about ions yet, but you need to know about ions when it comes to the atom and the periodic table, as well as naming chemical compounds. But a substance will form an ion if it gains, so if an atom gains electrons, or if it loses electrons. Then we say that it is an ion, it is charged, it's no longer neutral. So remember we spoke about the fact that electrons can move. An atom can gain electrons, an atom can lose electrons. Now think about this for a second. Electrons are negative. So if you are neutral, you have a charge of zero, you don't have a charge, you're neutral. Then if you gain an electron, remember electrons are negative. So if you gain an electron, you're going to end up with a negative charge. So something like this, Cl minus or O2 minus. These are ions. These are both ions. They're negative, so they're actually called anions. I'll show you how I remember the difference now. Anions and an atom will form an anion if it gains an electron. Electrons are negative, so you get a negative, you become negative. Now, the little minus, so this over here, this little minus over here means that one electron was gained. One electron. This two minus over here means two electrons were gained. So that is the charge. And it tells me how many electrons were gained or lost in this case. Two electrons were gained. And in this one, one electron was gained. Now, in the same way, an atom can lose an electron. And if you lose something that's negative, so you take something that's negative and you give it away, you become positive. So you form what we call a cation. For example, Na plus or Mg2 plus. So again, these are ions because they're no longer neutral, they have a charge. So either positive or negative, you become an ion. And positive ions are called cations. Cations, they're both cations. And that's when you lose electrons. You lose something that's negative, you become positive. And just like with the negative ions, if you, if you have a charge of plus, it means that you have lost one electron. If you have a charge of two plus, it means that you lost two electrons. And if you have a charge of three plus, it means you lost three electrons and so on. Now, how I remember the difference between cations and anions, cations, cat, cats over here, cats have pores. Okay, like a little cat paw, and positive. Cats are good, positive, 
causative, positive, but I think you get it. And anions over here, anion kind of sounds like onion. Onions make you cry when you chop them up. They're bad, negative. Okay, but either way, we have formed an ion because in this case, we have lost an electron, leaving us positive. In this case, we have gained an electron, leaving us negative. So we're no longer neutral. This is a way of representing an electron loss or an electron gain. In this case, we're gaining an electron. You can see plus E minus. So overall, we get a negative charge. Over here, we've lost an electron. So initially, it was like that. Then it lost an electron. It became a cation. Don't stress too much if you don't understand this notation. It's not used very often, but I just thought I would put it up there in case you ever do get asked that notation. So I want us now to do this activity together. I want us to write down the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in the following. Now I've listed sodium, aluminium, fluorine. Then I said chloride iron and magnesium iron. When I say iron, it means that it either has lost electrons or gained electrons. It's no longer neutral, but we'll get there. If I just say sodium, aluminium, or fluorine, I'm talking about just normal atoms. Just normal atoms. We look at it from the periodic table and we take it from there. So let's start with sodium. I'm going to look at the periodic table and look for sodium. So sodium is this one over here. So you can see that we have an 11 over here and a 23 over here. I'm going to rewrite that over here. So sodium, the periodic table says 11 and 23. What that means, remember, 11 tells me the number of protons and electrons. So that means that sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. The number of protons and electrons are the same because this is an atom, not an ion. Remember, the number of electrons only changes when, it, when it's an ion, when it gains or loses electrons. So 11, 11. And then the number of neutrons. Remember, that is the big number minus the small number. So 23 minus 11, which is 12 neutrons. Now that you know how to do sodium, you can pause and try and do aluminium and fluorine. If you look at the periodic table and you look at aluminium, aluminium is this one over here. You can see it has 13 and 27. So the number of protons and number of electrons are the same. They're the small number, the atomic number, which is 13. The number of neutrons is the big number minus the small number, atomic mass minus atomic number, which is 14. Then for fluorine, Fluorine is over here, 9 and 19, has 9 protons, 9 electrons, and 19 minus 9, so 10 neutrons. Now let's take a look at the ions, because that can be a little bit more tricky. Remember, you form an ion if you either gain or lose an electron. So, looking at chlorine, remember this number over here represents the number of protons and electrons in a neutral atom. However, I'm not talking about a neutral atom here. I'm talking about the chloride ion. So we look for chlorine on the periodic table because the chloride ion, it is an atom, the atom chlorine, that has either lost or gained an electron. It becomes the chloride ion, okay? And the magnesium ion is magnesium on the periodic table that has either gained or lost electrons to become the magnesium ion. So let's start with the chloride ion. So we look at chlorine on the periodic table. You see small number 17, big number, 35.5. So 17 would have been the number of protons and electrons if it was just a normal atom. But because it's an ion, it does not mean that there are 17 electrons anymore. Okay, so there are 17 protons because the number of protons will never change. So the small number, number of protons and electrons in a neutral atom, it'll always be the number of protons in an ion as well. Now, neutrons. That is easy. I'm leaving electrons for last. Neutrons is easy. It's still big. Minus small. So 35.5 minus 17. That's normal. Atomic mass number minus atomic number. Always. But now how do we figure out how many electrons it has? First of all, we know that it's an ion. So we know that it either gained or lost electrons. At this point, you don't know if it's gained or lost. We also don't know how many it's gained or lost. Could have gained or lost one or two or three. This is how you figure it out. Whenever you get your periodic table, I want you to do the following. I want you to write the following on the periodic table. For group one, now when I say group one, I mean this is group one, then the second group here, this one here is group two, and then you skip the middle, this is group three, 
and so on. Okay, so when I'm speaking about groups, I'm speaking about the vertical columns over here. So on top of group one, I want you to write a plus one. On top of group two, I want you to write a plus two. Skip the middle, you're going to write plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. And you'll always write exactly those numbers. What those numbers are, that's basically what we call the charge or the valency. Now, again, this stuff will become a lot clearer as we do naming and when we do atomic orbitals and electron configuration. But at the moment, all you need to understand is it either represents the number of electrons that must be lost or gained in order for the atom to reach noble gas structure. You're not going to know what that means at the moment, but basically it represents either the electrons lost or gained. Now, remember what we said earlier in the video? If you have a plus sign, it means that you've lost electrons and if you have a minus sign it means that you've gained electrons so that means what that means is that if you're in this group over here calcium magnesium beryllium they will lose two electrons if you're in this group over here fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and so on they will gain one electron because it's minus one so taking a look at the examples that I have, I have chlorine. Look at chlorine. Where's chlorine on the periodic table? It's over here. Chlorine gains one electron. So over here it says 17. It's not 17 because it gains one electron, so it becomes 18. I hope that makes sense. See if you can try and do magnesium with that same logic. So the number of protons, the number of protons will always be this number here, 12 protons let's quickly do the number of neutrons it's atomic mass minus atomic number which is also 12 then number of electrons if it was a neutral atom it would have been 12 electrons but it's not it's a magnesium iron which means it's either gained or lost electrons if you look for magnesium on the periodic table you can find it over here magnesium has plus two which means it lost two electrons so what that means is that magnesium does not have 12 electrons anymore. It must lose two electrons and it's going to then have 10 electrons. Okay, the magnesium ion is basically Mg2, which means you take the number of electrons here, 12, and I know it says plus two, but we must minus two because plus two means it has lost electrons. And I know that that is what confuses a lot of my students, but just think of it if you lose negative things, you become positive, which is why it's plus two. And the chloride ion is Cl minus. It means you must get an extra electron. So instead of 17, it's now 18. I hope this video has been useful. In other videos in this playlist, I will go over things like writing, still to do with the atom, writing it in the very particular AEZ notation. And we'll also be looking at isotopes, relative atomic mass, and past paper questions that they can ask you about the atom. I also have naming playlists, playlists on the periodic table, so check all the links in the description box below. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.